What's up YouTube, Danny Hype here with another Dragon Ball Super video. Today's video is a deck profile. This is the deck that I used to win the regionals this past weekend at the Origins Game Fair uh, in Columbus, Ohio. So the deck I used for the team events. Uh, there were six team events and I played in all of them. Uh, KTM ended up actually winning three of the team events, which is really, really great for us. Um, and this is the deck I used for all of them. I had a personal record, I believe, of I think it was 25 and 5 throughout the six events. Uh, and then during Swiss in the main event, I went 5-1-1, one, and one, and then I ended up winning out in top cut. Uh, it was a top 8. I had to play against a bunch of great players. It was a great experience. It was probably one of the best events I got to play in uh, that ARG has hosted so far. The team event was a blast being able to play with my friends uh, and, you know, trying to win all of these, like, gold packs, you guys. Like, check it out. Like, I have stacks and stacks and stacks stacks of these gold packs it's crazy i'm probably gonna do a video of me opening them probably do some kind of giveaway or do some kind of i don't even know what i'm gonna do with them yet i'm still debating what to do i kind of want to open some for myself but yeah we got a lot of prize things i got a crap ton of mats you know but like great biggest thing is like, i got to hang out with a bunch of my friends teammates and even like some of the um other teams like pbg was there got to hang out with them play them they're great competitors we had a blast. I think they took down three team events. We took down three team events. And then it was actually me and Justin, who's on PBG, in the finals of the main event. So it was just a great weekend for both teams. Uh, I couldn't be happier for both of us. And I can't wait to see you guys in Gen Con. All right, guys. So here's the deck. I'm going to do a quick run through of all the cards and why I chose them. Uh, so let's start off. Obviously, the leader is Son Goku. His ability is just so good. It's like a free objection. You discard a card to start the game. And you can uh, you know, flip up two energy. Which is a big deal, being able to start you know an energy or two ahead of your opponent uh, and be able to play your big cards before them. Uh, and then on his awakened side, being at the end of your turn, untap three energy, which is huge, especially for a lot of the cards in this deck and just in general. Because in, in the game, you obviously never want to tap out on your turn. Uh, it's and if you do, you can put yourself in a really vulnerable situation. But with him, you can safely play anything you want and not be afraid to tap out and still have the defense to uh, to combat your opponent's offense. So Kaba started off as a 4 of, went down to 3 of, ended up as a 2 of, because he wasn't really as important in this deck. The only matchup I felt he was really important in is U7, when you really want to aggro them down. I wanted to play like double Kaba right away, awaken them as soon as possible, because if U7, if you leave them on their front side for too long, they just build so much of a hand advantage, and uh, um, they get to the late game, which is what you do not want, because their boss monsters are better than your boss monsters, and they'll just blow you out just by playing a Frieza or the, or the Goku. But yeah, so Kaba was... You know, I think I'd rather, if I was going to play him, it'd be either 0 or 4 of now. Um, I'm still in the air. Up in the, like, there were times where he did come and play, but for the most part, he was kind of irrelevant. A late game double striker for 1 isn't terrible. That was another reason to play him, but other than that, uh, he was kind of whatever. Uh, the Fearless Pan was a late addition. So a lot of these decks that I play, especially this one, yeah, sure, it's like I played it and I, I made this deck, but my teammates on KTM, they definitely helped me reshape and build this deck. Like the night before... Uh, I left uh, for Origins, you know, Dusty was helping me with my pa with this deck, and, you know, I already thought about putting Pan in, and then he suggested, you know, maybe we should try fitting Pan into this deck, and so we, we, we ended up making the cuts, and we fit in Pan, and, uh, and it helped, because Pan is really great, a barrier blocker, pumps your board by 5k, which is, irre which is irrelevant, because, uh, you know, you have your hits and your topos and, you sh and your boo, and usually they stay on board for quite a while, so if you can get a Pan off when all three of them are out there, that's just so much... Uh, offense that your opponent can't really defend and the other biggest thing was chain attack uh in this deck chain attack really only has a target of chain attack into zeno which is obviously one of the main and best plays of the deck but there are times where you have such a good board that you don't actually want to chain zeno so chain kind of becomes useless but now with pan gives him another target to play uh makes him not useless which makes it a, just a great uh, addition for the deck. And it's just really great. And against U7 as well, which I expect to see a lot of. The uh, barrier blocker so that Victory Strike Goku can't just come freely swinging in at you. Um, being able to stop that was really nice. The next part, um, again, it's like my uh, my other teammate Colby. He uh, When I first made this deck, I didn't actually play these boos. And, you know, he's shown, he's shown, like, he showed me the way. And I added these boos, you know. So, like... Um, having a team like ATM helping me rebuild my deck because I always post my deck in our group chat and then you know they they suggest this or they add this and they we just slowly build the deck together so this deck is just as much uh, theirs as it is mine um, but yeah this Majin Buu here uh, it was a great probably the one of the best additions to the deck being able to play him to search for him so you play your Majin Buu on turn two search for uh, the five drop and then evolve on turn three and then you can awaken is 
insane. And then once he hit board, he was almost impossible to get rid of. Like, I never had an opponent get rid of it unless they chained Zenode. They can never attack. If they attacked up into it, I can always defend. Because they have to combo so much, it was easy to defend, especially with this deck. Uh, the next part is chain into Zeno. Uh, sorry, chain attack trunks. But yeah, his main play was chain attack into Zeno. That's just, if you ever you know, in a bad situation, which was rare, uh, he just gets you out of a jam. You know, you can attack your opponent freely, build their hand as much as you want, knowing that you're just going to chain Zeno them. Uh, and that happens a lot in this game, which is uh, a very powerful, it's a very powerful combo combo in this uh, in this meta right now. Now, the next card, probably the best card in T.O.P. was uh, Foreseeing Hit. Being, being able to look at their opponent's hand is probably the biggest part of him. Uh, being able to rip two cards out of it is just like a bonus. You can almost map out your opponent's turns for the next... Uh, like two three turns like I had a game where I just played hit 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 and then for three four turns in a row I mapped out his turn he couldn't do anything on his turn I took out all of his pieces and then like when I play the last hit you're going for game you know you take out their super combos or their topos or whatever and it's easy to map out and calculate how to kill them if you can just uh, see how much combo they have and compared to how much you have knowing they can't stop this or that and uh, yeah, hit is just a great addition to this deck it's probably one of the best cards actually it is the best card in this deck uh, and probably one of the best cards in the game. Next one is Topo. is basic. Topo is just meant for this deck. Uh, it's hard to play Topo in other decks because it's hard to keep up two energy uh, when you're trying to play your other cards. Um, so when you can negate for freely with him and get a, bo a body on board because you untap three, it's insane. Like you play hit, you know they they try to you pass turn untap three, they attack you. You play Topo and it's like great now they have a hit and a Topo to deal with. And all of a sudden I chain into Pan and it's like all of a sudden everything has double strike fact. It's just so powerful uh, in this uh, in this deck topo. Then Unbreakable, just like another like, another super combo. Basically, I like to see it as it's basically this deck has eight super combos. You know, you have your boost tech pickle and your Unbreakable. I start almost every deck, especially red decks, with these two cards. Like my eight card is basically preset for those eight cards because you need to have your super combos. The best cards in the game. That's actually a big reason I don't actually like Shigesh that much, even though I know it's powerful. Not being able to draw off your super combos feels pretty neg to me, <laughs> but. Uh, that's another debate for another time. Then your Boo here, he's probably the best, one of the best cards in the game, or not in the game, in the deck, sorry. And uh, yeah, 25k body, especially games, times where you want to, let's say, go for game. You know, you hit them, you see their hand, know that they can't stop a double strike. Then with Boo, you can just take all of your life up to, like, well, obviously leave your last life there. So you can have maximize your combo. Now from four life to one, you have three extra cards plus your hand to out combo their hand, which you have already seen with hit. So it just makes this thing so powerful. Uh, then Boo just went down to three. I think originally these were both at four, but they, I lowered them because you don't really need four of him because you search it so easily, and it was just an easy way to fit Pan in. Next one, your boost tech pick low super combos is obviously it's needed. Uh, this Boo, this Boo came into play sometimes. It's you'd only ever want to play this if you know they can't stop your triple strike, um, because I prefer the barrier double strike over a triple striker that you know for 60k. But you, you only do this if you know you can go for a game. And you know you can go for game if you're playing hit. So hit is, uh, and this is great because you can hit them, see that they don't have it, and then you can evolve on top of your boo that's already been there for like two, three turns. That was just a great combo, a great way to finish and surprise attack people. Or if people just saw it in your energy, they would all of a sudden need to play around it and are scared that this thing can come and kill them at any time. Then your Zeno, obviously, if you're ever in a pickle, chain attack into Zeno. If you're ever behind, it's just one of the best combos in the game. Uh, now my Mass Saiyan choice. This is my black card. Uh, during the team events, I was actually playing Fu instead because I wasn't able to play Mass Saiyan because another teammate was playing it. But uh, I think Mass Saiyan was definitely the meta call because of all the veggies I expected to see. And this deck doesn't have removal outside of Chain Zeno, so having Mass Saiyan was huge. He's a really easy cold ball less bait and helps you remove veggies or just threats that you uh, can't really deal with sometimes. Um, so Mass Saiyan is definitely the black card to play in this deck, but Fu isn't terrible. It was great against like Cell Chain decks and stuff like that. One is your Sensu Bean. Best, I forgot how I stopped playing blue for so long because blue felt like it was falling off. But playing Sensu Bean, oh man, Sensu Bean is one of the best cards in the game, and well, probably the one of the best blue cards in the game. Um, being able to, you know, almost reset your turns offensively or and on defense, you know, 5k for the turn that really shuts down veggies. Um, it's just a really good card. Then you're you're basic, you're gonna reset negate, and then the Mufubu. Mufubu was a meta call because I expect to see a lot of U7, you know, ultra or the ultimate. Uh, Victory Strike, Goku, and stuff like that. So Mufu was a great way to stop him and any boss monsters that you can't really deal with. Uh, so Mufu was just a great meta call there. And then the sideboard is kind of whatever. You know, I think you should always make your sideboard based on what you expect to see in your locals or your tournament. I expect to see a lot of veggies. 
and so I made this one specifically because you know, Nimbus Nimbus is, stops uh, you know their turn and then uh, bad ring stops are called bloodlust so this is just a kind of like a basic yellow stuff however I never actually needed it against the veggies like I was able to beat veggies with just the main build like there wasn't actually any real deck that gave my main build a trouble so the side deck can be worked on I'm not exactly sure what I would do with it in the future but for now it, it worked I did it once I sided once and it actually worked out for me so you know it's not a terrible side deck but yeah yeah <laughs> this is the deck you guys so this is the deck I took to and I won origins with I uh, hope you guys enjoyed.